Imagine walking through a crowded street in a bustling North African city, surrounded by the sights and sounds of a vibrant marketplace. Now, imagine being snatched away from your family, thrown into chains, and forced to cross the Sahara Desert, never to see your homeland again. In a world where injustice and exploitation are pervasive, the Arab slave trade was a shame on humanity. The story of the trade is an important part of black history that has to be unearthed and rewoven into the fabric of our shared understanding. Welcome to yet another exciting video about black history. Here we highlight the historical existence of black people and their contribution to Western civilization. In today's video, we will be unraveling the inhumane events that took place during the Arab slave trade. Stay with me to the very end. It promises to be an exciting adventure. If you're ready, let's dive in. You will agree with me that certain threads are woven so densely in the enormous fabric of human history that they cannot be untangled. One of the most complex and little-known aspects of black history is the Arab slave trade, which involved the smuggling of African Americans. This neglected trade has persisted in the shadows, its tale demanding to be told, like a thorn in the side of progress. The world was shocked when a video of Libyan auctioneers selling African migrants went viral in 2018. Only a few people are aware that the Arabs have been enslaving black people for more than a millennium. Though the transatlantic slave trade is frequently the first thing that springs to mind when we consider slavery, it's crucial to remember that the Arab slave trade was real and extremely harsh and brutal. Many slaves perished during the arduous and protracted trek over the Sahara, and those who made it often encountered appalling conditions at their destination including the unlawful castration of male captives as units and the cruel kidnapping of women. When talking about the history of slavery, the transatlantic slave trade's enormous popularity often takes center stage. However, you may be surprised to learn that Arab slave traders were among the first to enslave Africans, centuries before the transatlantic slave trade ever got underway. Unknown to most, the Trans-Saharan or Arab slave trade has a far older history. A long history dates back to the 7th century when Arab traders began transporting captives from Africa to the Middle East and other regions. It never reached the enormous scope of the slave trade over the Atlantic. The colonization of Africa did not lead to its illegality or end, despite political shifts throughout time. Saudi Arabia outlawed slavery in 1962, most Muslim countries had done the same by 1969. Slavery, however, remained in the desert areas of Iraq and other Arab nations like Yemen and Oman. Although the term Arab has historically been used to refer to many cultures or ethnic groups, it is more appropriately used to refer to racial groups. An estimated 10 to 18 million Africans were taken as slaves by Arab traders and transported across the Red Sea, Indian Ocean, and Sahara Desert between 650 AD and the 19th century. In addition to being forced to fight against the relentless desert sun and constantly shifting sands, the Africans who were transported as slaves by Arab slave traders were also cruelly killed by the slave merchants. The Africans were crammed into cramped, overcrowded slave ships and suffered from starvation, thirst, and walking in leg and neck chains. Through the Sahara, Africans were paired with Arabia, but some were also sold to Europeans in the process. British explorer and missionary John Livingston wrote in his letters about how Africans held as slaves in Arab hands were subjected to cruel treatment and forced to journey across the Sahara Desert. Livingston detailed how the ladies in slavery were bound together with painful and inhumane bark thongs and how each slave had to wear a massive forked stick that could reach a length of five or six feet and weigh between 30 and 40 pounds. In the 19th century, Sudan, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Zanzibar became significant sources of slaves for Iran. Ethiopian slaves were known as Habesha, and they were considered especially valuable due to their loyalty, intelligence, and good looks. These slaves were often employed in households as servants, concubines, and soldiers. Sudanese and Tanzanian slaves were typically used for forced labor in agricultural and mining industries while Zanzibari slaves were primarily used as domestic servants and concubines. The slave trade was facilitated by Arab and Persian traders who established commercial networks across the Indian Ocean. The vibrant marketplaces of Zanzibar, Tanzania, which is today well known for its gorgeous white sand beaches and tourist attractions, 
were once the hub of the Arab slave trade in East Africa. There were a lot of items on sale, including clothing and valuable raw materials like ivory. Still, the sight of hundreds of enslaved individuals was the most striking thing of all. Knowing that they could find customers in the Zanzibar market, traders from all around the region would bring their slaves there. According to a letter written by David Livingstone in 1870, Arab slave traders might sell up to 50,000 slaves annually in the Zanzibar market. Some slave traders would even transport their captives to Saudi Arabia or Egypt, while numerous others were stored in Zanzibar proper, where early 18th century Omani residents had started growing clothing. This was done in response to the strong demand for clothing on the global market, which sped up the establishment of sizable plantations that mostly used slave labor during the Arab slave trade. It's crucial to emphasize that Arab slave traders typically refrained from converting Africans they held as slaves to Islam. This was a calculated move because doing so would give the enslaved individuals greater rights and decrease the number of possible slaves. When it came to evangelizing Africans, Islamic missionaries took a circumspect approach, primarily because doing so may jeopardize the Islamic practice of the slave trade. Enslaving other Muslims, regardless of their race or ethnicity, was prohibited. This could have reduced an African's eligibility as a slave because it allowed them to claim the same religious liberties and rights as other Muslims. The cruel system of racism and tyranny known as the Arab slave trade, which persisted for more than 1400 years, was predicated on the exploitation of black people by Arab slave traders. Extreme power disparities that gave the Arabs the upper hand over black people characterized the power relations between Arab slave traffickers and black people. Economic power dynamics were one of the main ones. The trans-Saharan trade routes between West and East Africa benefited Arab traders, enabling them to exchange luxury commodities and other products for slaves with African monarchs. Arab traders were able to build strong trading networks and accumulate substantial wealth thanks to these economic ties, which increased their control over the black people they held as slaves. Arab slave traders possessed considerable political authority in addition to their economic might. Black enslavement and the slave trade were direct initiatives of numerous Arab governments and cultures. Arab slave traffickers were able to kidnap, capture, and sell black people with impunity because of the political and legal support this provided. Furthermore, black people were subject to the cultural influence of Arab slave traffickers. They frequently portrayed Africans as inferior and barbaric to legitimize the kidnapping and enslavement of black people through racism and dehumanization. This made it possible for Arab slave dealers to enslave black people and continue the cruel system of slavery with little opposition. The prejudice that resulted from the Arab slave trade permeated society as a whole and had a profound impact on societal attitudes and values. Similar to many other communities of the age, Arab societies were typified by strongly ingrained hierarchies based on racial and ethnic distinctions. Because of the color of their skin, Black people were frequently viewed as less clever, uncivilized, and savage than other cultures. Black people made up the majority of the slave population, and they too were subjected to racial prejudice and discrimination. A common belief was that slaves were nothing more than property. Impact of the Arab Slave Trade on Communities The Arab Slave Trade had a significant impact on the communities that were affected by it. The following are some of the impacts of the Arab slave trade on the communities. Demographic impact. The Arab slave trade had a significant demographic impact, as large numbers of people were forcibly removed from their homes and communities. This resulted in a loss of population, which in turn affected the social, cultural, and economic dynamics of the affected communities. Destruction of families and social structures. The slave trade destroyed families, as people were separated from their loved ones and sold into slavery. This led to the breakdown of social structures and cultural traditions, as people were forced to adapt to new environments and communities. Psychological effects. The trauma of the slave trade had long-lasting psychological effects on the communities affected by it, as families were torn apart, communities were destabilized, and people experienced violence, abuse, and exploitation. This trauma has been passed down through generations and is still felt by many today. Economic Impact The slave trade had a significant impact on the economies of the affected communities, 
as people were taken away from their homes and forced to work in the Arab world. This resulted in a loss of human capital and labor, which affected the economic growth and development of the affected regions. Cultural Impact The slave trade had a significant impact on the cultures of the affected communities, as many of the people who were taken into slavery were skilled artisans, musicians, and scholars. This resulted in the loss of cultural knowledge, traditions, and practices, which has had a lasting effect on the cultural heritage of the affected communities. Changes The slave trade had profound changes in the culture and society of African nations, as well as Europe and the Americas. Here are a few of the key changes that occurred as a result. Economic changes. The slave trade played a major role in the development of the global economy, particularly in the Americas. The labor of enslaved people was crucial in the production of crops such as sugar, cotton, and tobacco. This led to the growth of powerful plantation economies and the accumulation of wealth for slave owners and traders. Social changes. The slave trade had a significant impact on social norms and hierarchies in both African societies and the Americas. The system of slavery divided societies into those who were enslaved and those who were free. In the Americas, the racialization of slavery led to the creation of a new social hierarchy based on race. Political changes. The slave trade had a major impact on the political systems of African societies, as well as Europe and the Americas. Many African societies were destabilized by the slave trade as European powers took advantage of internal divisions to capture and sell enslaved people. The slave trade also played a role in the development of transatlantic trade networks and colonial empires. Cultural changes. The slave trade had a lasting impact on the cultures of both Africa and the Americas. Enslaved people brought with them their cultural traditions to the Americas, which influenced the development of new cultural forms such as music, dance, and cuisine. Despite the brutal conditions of slavery, enslaved people found ways to maintain cultural practices and traditions. Moral changes. The slave trade led to a growing awareness of the immorality and injustice of the practice. Abolitionist movements emerged in Europe and the Americas, calling for the end of the slave trade and the emancipation of enslaved people. This eventually led to the abolition of slavery in most countries in the 19th century, although the legacy of slavery continues to impact societies to this day. Navigating the issue of reparations and atonement for the Arab slave trade is much like navigating a stormy sea. It is often difficult to determine who is responsible for the damage caused by the trade, who deserves to receive reparations, and what form those reparations should take. The winds of disagreement and opposition to the idea of reparations can be just as strong as the waves of support for the idea, and the path forward is often murky and uncertain. One of the main issues surrounding reparations for the Arab slave trade is the difficulty in determining who should be responsible for paying reparations. In contrast to the transatlantic slave trade, where the majority of enslaved individuals were transported to the Americas by European countries, the Arab slave trade involved a complex network of local leaders, traders, and buyers from different regions and ethnic groups. It is therefore difficult to hold specific parties accountable for reparations. Another issue is the question of who should receive reparations. While many Africans were taken as slaves in the Arab slave trade, the descendants of these individuals are now spread throughout different regions and countries. It is unclear whether reparations should go to the countries of origin of enslaved individuals or to their descendants in countries where they now reside. There is also debate surrounding the nature of the reparations that should be paid. Some argue that monetary compensation should be given to individuals and countries affected by the slave trade. Others contend that cultural and institutional reparations, such as education and the restoration of African cultural heritage, would be more appropriate. Finally, some individuals question whether atonement and reparations are necessary or appropriate at all. Some argue that the Arab slave trade is history and that it is unrealistic and unfair to expect contemporary individuals and societies to take responsibility for past events. Others argue that reparations are necessary to achieve justice and to rectify the historical and ongoing harm caused by the slave trade. The Legacy of the Arab Slave Trade The Arab slave trade lasted for over a thousand years and had a significant impact on black people and the world as a whole. It involved the enslavement of millions of people from East, Central, and West Africa, 
who were sold to Arab merchants and transported across the Sahara and the Indian Ocean. The legacy of this trade is still felt today, both in the African diaspora and in the societies that participated in the trade. One of the most significant impacts of the Arab slave trade was the loss of human life and the destruction of African societies. Millions of people were forcibly removed from their homes. The forced migration of Africans to the Middle East is also another way that the Arab slave trade influenced black history. African villages were destroyed, lives were lost, and culture was upended as a result of this large-scale migration. Africans forced to be transported to the Middle East were compelled to integrate into the culture of their slave masters, giving up their languages, customs, and religious beliefs. New cultural identities, such as Gula and Swahili, have emerged as a result of this experience, demonstrating the adaptability and resiliency of African people. Additionally, the Arab slave trade played a significant role in the economic development of many Arab nations. Through the forced labor of enslaved Africans, Arab nations were able to build cities, cultivate crops, and extract resources from their lands. The economic exploitation of Africans for centuries has contributed to the persistent economic and social inequality faced by many black communities today. Finally, the legacy of the Arab slave trade has contributed to the ongoing struggle for racial justice and equality. The forced enslavement and exploitation of Africans for centuries has resulted in a persistent system of racial inequality, which black communities continue to face today. The legacy of the Arab slave trade has contributed to the current conversations around reparations and the need for structural change to address systemic racism, reflective of efforts initiated by the Black Lives Matter movement. However, numerous initiatives have been made to address the Arab slave trade in conversations about black history. Among these initiatives are programs for education. A few colleges and educational establishments are incorporating the Arab slave trade into their courses on black history and transatlantic slavery. Research and publications. Academics are working to shed light on the Arab slave trade and how it affected African history through their books and articles. Public lectures. To raise awareness of the Arab slave trade and its effects on black history, public talks and symposiums are being arranged. Cultural activities. To highlight the contributions of African cultures, especially the effects of the Arab slave trade on the continent, cultural events are being planned. Online activism. Online activists are using social media platforms to create awareness about the Arab slave trade and its impact on black history. Advocacy groups. Advocacy groups are promoting the recognition and acknowledgement of the Arab slave trade in discussions around black history and advocating for reparations for the descendants of the victims of the Arab slave trade. Understanding how the Arab slave trade affected black history is crucial since it greatly contributed to the uprooting, dehumanization, and poverty of the black population throughout many regions of Africa. Some have called the Arab slave trade one of the most inhumane forms of African enslavement in history. Africans were the main target of Arabs. They were kidnapped, sold into slavery, robbed of their freedom and possessions, and kept in cruel conditions. Black African slaves were heavily displaced by the Trans-Saharan trade route between West and East Africa. It is noteworthy that this trade continued for centuries before the transatlantic slave trade. Appreciation. Understanding this history can help one appreciate the history and experiences of black people outside of the American context, while also radically changing the narrative about current racial and privilege concerns. It's time to acknowledge the harsh realities of our past and make progress toward a more promising future for all. I implore every one of you to learn about the wrongs committed in the past and to take steps to build a society that is just and equitable. Participate in local events, denounce inequality, and lend your support to groups promoting social justice. When we work together, we can change things and build a better future for future generations. Rather than ignoring the past, let's draw lessons from it and move on with a better future. If you find this video interesting and would like to learn more about black people's historical contributions to Western culture, let us know. Kindly click the like and subscribe buttons. To get notifications every time we upload new videos, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. I appreciate your time and hope to see you in the next video.